Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. I am David Catalano, and today I have the privilege of introducing Sig and Tanya Klotz. So welcome, guys. Hi. Hi, everyone. So a uh, little bit about Sig and Tanya. They are part of our church. They've been here for over five years now, right? About six years now, yeah. <laughs> six years. Wow. Yep. So they have an amazing testimony. Um, it's cool that I, I've gotten to see them grow in Christ. We've all got to see them grow in Christ as a church. And so we're going to get to l- know a little bit about their testimony, specifically the amazing things God's done with their marriage. But before we start, how are you guys doing today? Good. Can't complain. Yeah, Can't good. complain. Very nice, yeah. So one thing, when people come to our church, they often ask is, um, where do you guys get your accent from? Where yeah. are you guys from? Yeah, we were originally from South Africa. So, um, yeah, born and raised there. And unfortunately, if you uh, spend 35 plus years in one place, you kind of get that accent and it sticks with you. So... <laughs> <laughs> I know I've had some of your guys, uh, well, Tanya's amazing uh, South African dish. So she always jokes. She says she cooks more than just that dish, but it's really good. What's it called again? Babuati. Bab- Babuati. I always Babuati. mess it up. I like, don't even like remember what letter it starts with, but <laughs> it's really good. So um, you guys are both in South Africa. You met in South Africa and got married there, right? Yes, yep. that's true. Yeah. And then what brought you guys to the U.S.? Well, at first, um, yeah, the Lord, oh, the Lord took us on a journey, number one, but uh, we couldn't have kids, so mm. we thought, you know what, medically we couldn't have kids. And then um, we just decided, you know what, we don't need to be worried about leaving a worldly legacy behind, mm. so let's just go travel and see what the world's like out there. And then Sig got online and he saw Ride Aid Pharmacy was handling stuff and yeah. Yeah, I guess there was a bit of a, um, in the US, uh, they just went over from the uh, B Farm to the Farm D program. So there was a bit of a gap. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, we kind of, uh, we got the opportunity to uh, to come over. They were hiring, they were recruiting really hard, and we said, you know, let's go on this little adventure. Let's see Let's see what this is all about, you know. Uh, if it works out, great. If it doesn't, um, yeah, it's just a three-year contract, so, you know, we can always go back. South Africa's not disappearing. And, yeah. We and you guys over here. recently became citizens, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Did the uh, naturalization test and all of that, so... Um, I remember that process. We were praying for that. But um, my first question, though, is, so you guys first arrived in Maine, right? Yes. Yep. And you guys, you know, you had found Christ in South Africa. You were going mm-hmm. to church in Maine. But um, so my first question is, sorry, I'm looking for it. So you both have known Christ for a number of years. But despite knowing Christ for a number of years, how has your relationship with Christ continued to grow? Yeah, I want to say um, <clears throat> something Something really started happening uh, when we were in Maine. Uh, the church we were at at that stage, uh, Lincoln Christian Fellowship, it's uh, also a Calvary Chapel uh, affiliated church. Um, yeah, for me personally, I can say I, <laughs> I had the problem that a lot of people in the U.S. have. I loved the idea of a Savior. I didn't really like the idea of a Lord. Uh, I didn't really make him fully lord of my life you know it's mm-hmm. kind of like at the back of your mind you've got this this little ticket so <laughs> yeah i i knew the truth i just didn't really live it but um going to lincoln christian fellowship that that really started a process in uh certainly in my heart you know it's it's going through the bible uh, book by book um you know chapter by chapter verse by verse not skipping over any, anything having expositional teaching it started rekindling a love, uh, a love for the word that that I had when I first came to Christ. You know, so so yeah, there was a time when we 
when I was certainly very lukewarm um, in South Africa. And yeah, I don't know. It's just getting to know him again. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I almost want to say it, uh, it reminds me a lot of um, in Revelation, uh, you know, in uh, the letters to the churches, um, to the, uh, the lukewarm church. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of where I was, you know. I had the outward some some nice looking outward works, but <laughs> yeah, I didn't consider from where I fall, and I kind of lost that first love, and yeah, yeah. And I think that's it's powerful. Kind of shared that with me before, but that idea that like how your relationship in Christ continues to go and praise the Lord, it does. Yes. Um, you know, so you guys were saying you were saying in South Africa there was some lukewarmness. And then when you went to Maine, that was, there was definitely the, uh, the Lord did a work there. And then when you guys came to, um, Calvary, uh, Oro Valley, there was even more, you know, growth as well, which is cool. Just, I believe, right. We continue to grow. And, and that's one thing I'd say. So, um, reading my questions right here, <laughs> but I think part of the huge part of the testimony that I wanted to get to was when you guys had come to this church, your marriage was really struggling. You know, and uh, I remember you guys sharing that with me and, and, and what you guys were going through at the time. And I think it's it's important to share that part of like how much it was struggling as because it also shows how much God restored your marriage. So that's a question I want to ask. Can you share with us a bit about the struggles you guys were having in your marriage and then kind of what God started to do that brought restoration? Yeah, Um you want to go first with me? No, you can go, my love. <laughs> so I think basically what happens is you, oh, my my side of a story, because you don't have the word of God and you don't follow, you pick and choose v- verses, what you like, and I think you represent that in all aspects of your life. If you pick and choose from the word of God, you want to pick and choose in your relationships, mm. what you like and don't like. And my main thing was I didn't I didn't follow to serve my husband mm. and be submitted to him in the right way. I wanted consequences for everything and mm. I wanted to be God and see justice and all that things. And I didn't bec- I didn't um rely on God to do the work. Mm. And through the word of God, and as we read the bir- through the Bible, verse by verse, you see things coming out, and you realize that, you know what, God must be in the center of everything. And through that, I realize as a wife, God loves me and him. Mm. He died for us both on the cross, and I need to be obedient to God. Mm. Number one, I need to be Try to be the best Proverbs 31 wife I can be. And I must do it as unto the Lord, not as unto my husband first, yeah. but unto Lord first. Yeah, and I think to go with that, I mean, it's kind of a something that a lot of women struggle with, right? Or wives struggle with, right? Um, you know, kind of submitting unto the husband and learning how to be forgiving and gracious. You know, I think you were saying that, like, he would mess up and it's like, he needs consequences. He yes. needs, you know. Exactly that. And I wanted to give a consequence, <laughs> you know. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, but, and the Lord says, you know what, at the end, and as his walk progressed and he got closer to God, I started to realize more and more that, you know what, God is ministering to him too. So God's going to sort him out himself. I don't have to do that. Yeah. I must just focus on what God called me to do. Amen. Yeah, yes. and I love that. And I think, like you were saying too, I love that you guys were talking about, well, who wants to share what, and, and like we were both struggling with our own things and how you both were like, all right, I need to work on what the Lord wants me to work on. Um, so let's say, what would you say was the struggle that was keeping you from being a good husband? Well, um, first and foremost, I wasn't submitted to God. <laughs> okay, if, if you're not submitted to him, you cannot lead and I didn't lead. In fact, I, yeah, I was a guy who got myself into sexual sin. Mm. Um, yeah, I was a guy that, um, I mean, yeah, but by the New Testament standard, um, yeah, I was the guy who committed adultery 
repeatedly and repeatedly, maybe not physically, but what did Jesus say? You know, if you look at a woman with lust, what have you done? You've committed adultery in your heart, and I didn't just look, I went actively searching. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's powerful. Like sometimes it's hard to share these ugly part of our parts of our testimony, you know, and um and I remember you know, I think that's that's something that there are so many husbands out there that don't even want to mention that, that are struggling with that, that, that same struggle. Um, you know, and sometimes like you were saying, like that lukewarmness, like that's a hard area to mm -hmm. surrender uh, in our in our lives, you know, and, you know, to expand on that a little more, how did that drive a maybe you both can share on that, but how did it drive kind of a, uh, a wrench in, in your intimacy together and your ability to be a husband and a wife? I don't know if Tonya could have trusted me at that stage of proceedings <laughs> because, I mean, you know, trust, once it's broken, it's not so easily restored again. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, like I said, that's, that's what I walked in, you know. I, I wasn't faithful to Tonya, not emotionally, not... Um, I didn't honor her. I didn't protect her. I was called as a protect, you know, as a husband. You're called to protect your wife. You're called to provide, but not just physically, but also emotionally, which I certainly wasn't doing. Um, also protecting her, which I certainly wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's like it's like you name a box to check, and I didn't check it. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you know, Tanya had every right to to walk away if she so chose, and yeah, we. We were on the verge of separating, actually. Yeah, I remember that. Um, a little bit about the testimony, you guys remember it. It's so funny because some one of our ushers came over to me and he said, hey, there's this couple crying because you guys were so touched by the message, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Kind of leading on my next question a little bit. But, you know, the word of God was pressing onto your guys' hearts. Yes. And you both were really convicted. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think, like, you know, also this idea that God had a better plan for your marriage. Yes. You know. Amen. Amen. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe what was what was the Lord speaking to you guys when you were in that service? And you guys, like you said, I remember you guys were on the verge of getting separated. Going to church was kind of like, all right, I guess uh, we got to do this to, you know, hopefully the Lord will speak to us. But what were some of the convictions you guys were feeling when you were at church that day and you both were crying? It was more of we knew we are not representing marriage the way Christ mm. intended it to be. Yeah. And um, we knew we were wrong in front of God. Mm. Both of us were wrong. Amen. And, yeah, that's not what we need to do. We need to represent marriage as close as possible to what God wants it to be because yeah. that represents his love to us. Yeah, and and I, and I love that. I love that you said that, Tanya, because with SIG, right, sometimes, you know, and I encourage, you could probably encourage those women out there that you have a husband who isn't living right and he's really, as, as SIG was really falling short in a lot of areas, you know, but the way that a wife reacts can also play a huge part um, in, in, in how the marriage works as well, you know, and so I think you were saying that that was a part that you were struggling with. It's like, how how do I react? How do I you know, encourage him or how do I navigate through that? You know, what would you, what would you share with women that might be having a husband who may be struggling with that? What would you give to them encouragement or just something to help them uh, as they face something like that? What got me through this was turning to God. Mm. That really, that gave my, that gave me strength and going through, like I said, going through the word of God and seeing what he intended marriage to be. And I, we're thinking about God's forgiveness for my life. Mm. But I did wrong. And I have no angel. <laughs> yeah. I did many things wrong. And and I believe if lo God looks at certain s at sin, at sin, it's all about sin. It's everything sin. So who yeah. am I to put him under condemnation? Which I did. Mm. And uh, that's not God. God wants us to be free. And if I keep on poking him or reminding him about it and tell him how I feel. And if I don't love the way Christ loves him, ask God to help me to love him the way he loves him, I'm not going to support him. I'm not going to be his helper because our woman is supposed to be the helper for the husband. Mm. And 
that's what we need to do. We need to support and ask God because God is my daddy and mm-hmm. every woman that goes to God he is his dad and he wants the best for you. Amen. So rely and focus on him and yeah, he that, pulls it through. And I, I love that because that goes along with my next question, you know, for both you guys. Because, you know, especially being Calvary Conversations, we love the Bible. And we love the, just like how God speaks to us through the Bible. How, um, you know, how did the Bible and your relationship with Christ help you guys in restoring your marriage, taking the steps to restore your marriage? Well, um, yeah, uh, the Bible is pretty much Marriage 101. <laughs> you know, Amen. It's the Marriage 101 guide. I mean, uh, if you, yeah. If your car's broken, what do you do? You go to the one who made the car, right? Mm-hmm. Because they kind of also have a manual. Um, who instituted marriage way back in Genesis 2? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. If, if God created us and he created marriage, he knows best. You know? Mm-hmm. And there's, there's so much... There's so much in the word um, about marriage, just about the the role that the husband has, the role that the wife has. You know, it's it's easy to say, yeah, well, we're supposed to lead and lead with love, but what does that look like? You know, yeah. the word tells us; it's not hidden; it's in plain sight. <laughs> That's what I love yeah. about mm. the, the word. Also, you know, it's not it's not it's not hard to get. It's just as long as you're open to the Spirit to teach you and teachable. Uh, God will speak to you through the word. Amen. You know, I love that. Um, so a little bit about Sig is he actually played rugby at the amateur level. So past college, right? Yeah. And so that's one thing I loved about you. I, you know, we were both athletes. And I remember, uh, you know, you came on the setup team with me. And I think that's a huge thing is about being teachable in the word yes. of God. Because mm-hmm. um, I know that you know, being held accountable and both you guys were, were being discipled or being poured into. And, you know, you were so willing to hear the word of God, but what would you share just about, you know, you, you guys came to this church, you said, Hey man, our marriage, we're not representing marriage well. And, but also saying, you know what, God, we want to do it right. I remember you guys both telling me like, all right, we're willing to do what it takes to be right. And we're willing to be taught what the word says in that. What would you guys say about, you know, there's other hurting and lost couples that maybe they're, 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 they're at wit's end with each other. What would you say is part of being teachable or, or what it means to surrender? Like what is some things that you did to uh, learn or, or, or try to be teachable? <laughs> I don't want to sound like an, like a advertisement board for Nike or something, but you know, just do it. <laughs> Yeah. If there's if there's uh if you treasure something, you'll be willing to fight for it and you'll be willing to do anything and you'll be willing to go to go for it to to fight for it tooth and nail, you know. Um mm-hmm. for a long time I didn't treasure our marriage. Mm-hmm. But once once that restoration work, once God started that restoration work, it was like what are you going to do? Are you going to fight for this? Are you going to take the steps? Are you going to Are you going to cut off your left hand if it makes you struggle? You know, are you going to uh, Are you going to stab out your eye if it makes you struggle? Not literally, but you know, are you going to take radical action here? And yeah. you know, we had to do that. So you and my account, you my accountability partner. Um, yeah. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that. <laughs> I think surrender, right? That was mm. you both learned that a lot in both ways. Um, yeah. Because there was, I remember it was an uphill battle for you guys to build that trust with each other again, mm. yes. right? But one thing I'd say, uh, and you guys could probably attest to this, as that trust became, as you guys surrendered things, what did you guys notice about your marriage? Um, uh, what did you guys notice about your marriage as you began to surrender things and do those things that were really hard? And I think we'll talk about some of what those things are, but what did you guys begin to notice as you were beginning to surrender to the word of God in certain things that uh, you felt him? calling you to do the thing is that for if i must speak about about love but the deeper love Mm. um i love him in such a way that i never thought was possible Mm. after the hurt after all those things and rejection i felt and stuff and 
God just gave me a new love for my husband. Wow. And it is for me deep and I can't explain that love. It's like, it's not butterflies and stuff like that, but it's a deeper love. Yeah. I, I just, I can't, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. It's just deep. And I think one thing I think with that was, is um, you said, you made such a good point. You said there was so much hurt. And I remember you guys both had so much hurt. But one of the things was, uh, I remember as you guys were growing in Christ, when you guys began to see how much Christ forgave you mm -hmm. yes. and your yep. personal relationship with Christ grew, yes. that's when it was like, when you guys were able to realize the forgiveness God had on you, mm. your love for each other really grew. You know, that's one thing I wanted to go about. Like, you know, I love talking about very applicable things, you know, and Sega, you mentioned the uh, accountability yeah. You know, so maybe we could talk a little bit about, about like the discipleship and what we did together um, when, you know, to encourage you in growing those things. You want to talk about, I mean, we used to do setup together. Or what were some things through that that really encouraged you um, that really helped, you know, I think, you know, in terms of having a brother come alongside you? Yeah, it was um, it was extremely necessary and very helpful. Um Knowing also that 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 there's certain areas that you struggled in that you shared with me, but that you were free from, yeah, that was tremendous. You know, like being able to to walk that road with someone who has walked it before, mm -hmm. um, that speaks a lot. And uh, I want to thank you also very much for, you know, saying, well, this is what the word says, mm -hmm. you know, and this is this is how I. Uh, this is how I walked. This is what I had to do to get free, and yeah. you know, being being having some having that that living testimony in front of you is a big thing. You know, it's yeah. a huge thing. It's uh, it's what kind of gave me hope. You know, yeah, it, this is possible by yeah. God's grace and strength. This can be possible, and uh, yeah, I mean, I guess yeah, we pray together quite a bit. Yeah. I know you, uh, what's that restaurant you like so much with the buffet? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was we kind of a spot. We went to Golden Crowl. Yep. A couple of times, yeah. Um, yeah. I went there last night, actually, so. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, serving together, uh, like uh, back then when we just had the one service, um, doing the setup ministry in the mornings, I mean, that was great, you know. Uh, serving is something that's, quite often underrated you know it's a uh, you know it, it's something that jesus exemplified through his life death and resurrection um it's something he told us to do and you know uh, being able to just do a little bit of that serving uh, with setup before before service was was fantastic you know those yeah sorry i always joke because uh you know you can hear i don't have the greatest voice on earth and I could certainly never be like on the worship team up front there singing, but you know what? I could worship God with a broom. <laughs> <laughs> I could sweep with the best of it. <laughs> you know, I remember we were talking about that. There'd be leaves everywhere, and we would, uh, we'd be, we'd, we'd just be like, you know what? We're worshiping the Lord right now. Amen. Bring that up. But <laughs> hey, I love that. I think you made a really good point. And Tanya, I, I think you could share a little bit about that too. There was a lot of other women that came alongside you. Um, and encouraged you as well. I don't know if you want to share a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, Mama Teresa was mm. my, one yeah, of Pastor my ladies. Pastor Craig's wife. Pastor Craig's wife. She talked truth. Mm. She didn't tickle my ears. <laughs> and she was truthful to me. And that is what helped me a lot. Mm. Is the end when ladies praying for you and guide you and giving you the word in truth and love in mm. Not sugarcoating things, you know. It's like, yeah, but you did something wrong there too. You need to sort that out with yourself too, you know. So it's just to get that truth, honest love through sisters that walk with you. It's not. Um, you, I think what one do sometimes is if you're in a situation where you feel lost, you are uh, prone to go into lockdown mode. Mm -hmm. And you try to avoid people because you're going through this hurt. But yeah. it's actually the enemy lying to you. You need to step out. You need to go to uh, people that represent Christ the best I can. People that follows the word of God. People that has that to a lamp to their feet, you know. 
and go to those people, ladies or gentlemen that pray. It's not afraid to pray, to pray for the Lord, you know? Amen. And I think, you know, there are a lot of, there, there are two big things I want to share a little bit with your testimony to go along with that. First one I want to start, start out with is like you were saying, having someone that's going to speak the word of God to you. Mm-hmm. Um, that's one thing I, when you guys came to this church, I saw it, you know, I think Sig being an athlete, you, you had, you understood what it means to be coachable in a lot of ways for someone to kind of speak hard truth to you to say, Hey, you know, you're not doing the right form, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I see that with you too, Tanya. Um, what would you say about, you know, being Christians? And sometimes I remember saying, you might, you know, I know us specifically, what is, what can you say about, you know, someone sometimes having to speak the hard truth of the word to you and how important that is? Oh, it's vitally important. I mean, um, <clears throat> John fourteen six. what did Jesus say? I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, he represents the truth perfectly. If we're going to be imitators of him, we'd better, be <laughs> we'd better love truth, you know? Yeah. Um, also, it's... It, the most loving thing you can do for someone is to actually speak truth, have those hard conversations if need be. You know, uh, yeah. I mean, if if I see somebody going uh, in a direction and I know where it leads, mm. if I don't speak up, and if I don't confr- confront that that brother or sister in lo- well, brother in love, then you know I'm failing him. Then I'm not loving him properly. And I want to thank you guys for loving us, yep, <laughs> and for coming alongside us and for. Showing us this is what the word says, you know. Because let's be perfectly honest: if if you if you're a, li- a little piggy, blissfully unaware and happy in your sin, and uh, kind of liking that, um, you're not going to stumble upon truth, you know. Somebody's got to kind of knock some sense into you, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I can put it in a in a sense, so. And uh, yeah, if if you're not willing to to speak that truth. I don't think you're really walking in love. So, yeah, yeah, and I think, um, like you were saying, that that hard truth, mm-hmm. and there was a time, you know, where we did have to have this hard truth. And I think another huge thing too, you know, is also being really honest with, you know, the people that want to pour into your life. And that was one mm-hmm. thing I remember was I was really grateful as you, um, you know, you were really honest with me about when you were struggling and where you were struggling. And that was helpful because we were able to, and you really, I, I felt like, you know, it's kind of like you knew that I was there to help encourage you. And so you, you wanted to be held accountable. I think that's mm-hmm. such a huge thing too. Um, sometimes discipling people or, you know, we want someone to pour into our lives, but then at the same time, like we secretly don't want to be accountable versus saying, you know what, I, I really got to learn to hate my sin, mm-hmm. you know? Um, the second thing I want to talk about and, Tony, you might be able to expand on this too, is the idea of reading the Bible con- like consistently, making that a practice in the home. And I mean, you guys, I, I, I'm so encouraged by you guys, you know, I'm on the Bible app and I see you guys highlighting verses and I see, you know, you guys always have Bible studies, always have verses and it's become such a, I, I mean, I've seen your relation, that personal reading of the Bible. There's this constant study alone. Um, what can you guys share about that? Just how did that become such an important practice in your home? Because I know that that wasn't such a big practice until, you know, something switched where it did become such a practice. Yeah. Um, I think as a wife, <laughs> it is very nice to see my husband serving God in front of me. <laughs> mm. And learning and want to be teachable, teachable. So with that leadership, leadership of him, I wanted to step in and because mm-hmm. oh, I like this, you know, it's like he's leading in a way I actually want him to lead. Yeah. And that really encourages us, and it also bring up topics that you normally won't discuss because life is so busy sometimes, and to get that quiet times, and we are confronted with a verse, and it's like. Oops, what does this really mean, you know, and to talk about it? Yeah. Well, I love that. To, to say that, too, I remember I'm like, Sig, you know, you, you know, you should really, you really need to make a practice of reading the Bible. And I remember, like, Sig would read, like, he started reading the Bible, and, like, I didn't even have to tell him, like, you know, he's just like, <laughs> I'm like, Sig, like, you know, and we're on the Bible app, so I have, like, you know, I get all his highlights, you know. 
but I'm so encouraged. I, and I'm still encouraged, Sig. You know, it's six years, you know, we've been good friends. And I still see what you highlight on the Bible app. I still see you love the word of God. We, we still talk and you still share with me the scriptures and things like that. And so, you know, I think that's a huge thing I'd encourage husbands to do. I've seen yes. so many marriages really blessed because they spend time in the word of God, really yes. wanting to spend time with the yeah. word of God. Amen. Um, another funny thing I love, you guys are both on the prayer team. Yeah. Right? yeah. And you guys <laughs> love to pray. Yes. And I love the story of, you know, when Sig, when we were serving together and I remember we were praying out loud and you were kind of like, ah, you know, praying out loud. I don't do this that much. <laughs> and so, but now I always joke because, you know, Sig, Sig's like, can I pray for you? Can I pray for you? <laughs> you know I, I mean, you inspired me even more. And I love it because again, we would sit down together and it's, it's so encouraging because as I poured into you, you really poured into me. You really inspired me in a lot of ways. And one of the things you did inspire me was like said, you know, Sig, we praying out loud with your wife is such a huge practice to have at home and learning to pray out loud over others. And I think you guys, maybe you can both share about that, but how did, uh, you know, prayer wasn't such a huge practice, praying out loud together and praying over people. Can you tell me a little more about how that became a little more of a practice in the home and, and, and just spending, you know, seeking God in that way? So for me, it was basically you can't, I think, without journey in life, mm -hmm. uh, you run to everything else except Christ. Mm. And prayer is the first step you can do. Yeah. And the first one to get an interaction with God. So pray first. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit will help you to guide your mouth in situations and things like that. So that's for me. I run to God first yeah. before other things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So do you have anything to add more to that? Yeah, it's it, it's just, um, yeah. Uh, you know, uh I want to say like in the modern church, it's almost there's a lot of times when we can kind of, we fear so much being religious that we don't want to make make practices and make sp and do spiritual disciplines. And yeah, if I can just uh, quickly pull up uh, Daniel 16, like just before Daniel got put in, uh, into the lion's den. Yeah, Daniel 16? Uh, 6, 10. Daniel 6, 6 10. 10. Yeah. Here comes the accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to maybe read it. Because <laughs> my I don't know how my accent translates, but I guess I could read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, but when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its window open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. I love that. Yeah, just that's the thing. Just as he has always done, you know. And it's, I, sorry, yeah. I don't want to sound weird or anything now. Um, yes, we need to be in constant communion. Okay. Mm. Um, Amen. I mean, with me and Tanya, same thing. Yes, we need to be able to have those those quick and instant moments. But we also need to have special time set aside, like a date night. Mm. You know. Yeah. Amen. If our marriage needs that, how much more does our relationship with Christ yes. need need that? You know, so setting aside that that special time, that's like our date night with God. Amen. <laughs> you know, and if you neglect that, then then the little spontaneous moments can also start sort of drifting away a bit. You know, so yeah, and I love that. Again, I love what you were saying, Tanya. How prayer is like. I honestly, I, and I, it happened the other night, you know, I was with Pastor Greg and we were talking about something. I was like, I don't even know what to say. Can I, can I just pray for you? You know? <laughs> yes. And I just love that idea of like, I think prayer is just inviting God Amen. into areas that we just can't move. You mm -hmm. know, it's like, it's like, you know, God, I don't know what to do. So, but I also mm -hmm. think, I mean, prayer is such a great way to love each other sincerely, you yes. know, to show that you're listening and to just bring the cares and worries that you know, your spouse or for me, just, you know, my friends or uh, people that I meet, you know, in the grocery store, like, it's just a simple way to say, hey, you know, I, lo God loves you. And I just want to love you in Christ by bringing whatever your struggles are to someone who can handle them better than I can, Amen. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, um, and I love that, you know, I hear you guys pray together sometimes and it's just, it's so sweet, you know, 
um, being prayer warriors. I think another one more topic I kind of want to go over is the topic of serving. I know we kind of talked about it a little bit more. Um, and I think that goes along with what you were saying. We always say, you know, at men's group, we'd always say, don't forget your first ministry. Right. Mm. Um, that's why for, I think, uh, this will probably be on Valentine's day, but our men's group, we're encouraging the other men to spend with their wives and to take them out, you know, cause you know, pouring into your wife and making sure that she's well loved is definitely a first ministry. So with that, you know, cause you guys are serving, but could you describe maybe a little bit about how that works? Sig, you know, setting your wife as the first, as your first ministry, you know, um, again, because she's your first ministry doesn't mean you guys don't go to church, but you know, prioritizing church while also prioritizing your wife, what does that look like? Um, it, it helps to have a wife who is completely submitted to God. <laughs> it helps a lot. <laughs> so uh, because of that, up, um, you know, I think the biggest thing is to have the same vision and to be able to run together. And quite honestly, um, a husband and wife, I believe, are always going to have that that closeness, that um, that shared vision. Mm. You know, so uh, that makes it a lot easier. Um, God isn't going to give me a dream to go back to Africa and for Tanya to stay here, okay? Amen. It's not going to work like that. Um, so, yeah, the uh, the first priority is obviously your wife and spending time with your wife, um, spending time together in the Word and in prayer. Um, yeah. But also just having some fun together and yeah, listening to each other. And, um, and yeah, that would be first ministry. Absolutely, no two ways about it. But the thing is, out of that flows uh, serving together at church because you share that same vision, because yes. you share that same passion, because your hearts are yeah. aligned and your hearts are aligned towards Christ. And so this that old teaching uh, thingy with uh, if you're here and your wife's there and God's there, how do you get closer together? You know, you both seek him more. Yep. And I love that. And I'm going <laughs> to give this a little more to you, Tanya. You're saying like that first, the first ministry for husband, I believe like you were saying is to build her up in the vision that you guys share together. Yeah. Um, and this goes to the next point, right? Cause God's done a lot to restore your marriage, but at mm -hmm. the same time you guys could probably share a little bit about this, but how much sometimes your visions Despite having the same vision, you guys kind of, you guys get a little shaky sometimes or someone veers off a little bit or, you know, so does that ever happen in your marriage? Like sometimes you guys share the same vision, but all of a sudden, you know, someone kind of drifts away and you guys have to encourage each other, or rebuke each other. Or, um, you know, what's that like? So for, um, I don't know, I think Lord just helped us a lot. I think we had a point where I will look at him and... He will look at me and it's like, oh, I will tap his leg and say, okay, well done. You're going straight. You, you're you fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. God's with you with this one. <laughs> and sometimes I will just tap him and we'll look at him and then he, he will know that he's, he's steering off without me saying much because the Holy Spirit speaks to him. Mm -hmm. So if I just do that little thing, he knows. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's the fact that you guys – Again, I see this with you guys. The fact that you guys are praying together and, you know, making time to read the Bible. And, and in fact, you know, we can't forget little Charisma, uh, your daughter. She, I know that she, you read the Bible with her too, and you pray with her too. And she's, and she's amazing at our church. She loves to serve. I remember she had the leaf blower one time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was I don't know if we were supposed to allow her to have a leaf blower, but she was, you know, she, she saw daddy doing the leaf blowing with the leaves. So she... <laughs> She was like, I want it. So she was helping with the leaves, the leaf blower. It was a really sweet story. But um, but yeah, so she she sees you guys a lot. But I think, like you were saying, you guys, because you guys spend so much time trying to pursue the vision of God. Yes. It makes it easier to communicate. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Absolutely. And I mean, uh, if you're really serious about pursuing God and pursuing what's on his heart, He's got the same thing on his heart. You know, his heart doesn't change. So that means your vision's going to align. And, and you know, like both of us are passionate about families, about restoration of families, about yes. 
Tanya is probably more more passionate about children. I'm probably mm. a bit more passionate about the role of a husband. But mm. it's it's perfectly aligned visions, mm -hmm. if you hear what I'm saying, because th we both believe that's what is on God's heart. That's what the Word tells us is on His heart. <laughs> that's what we hear during prayer, and that's why we can walk together. <laughs> you know, I mean, I just I thank you guys so much for coming to share your testimony like you said i i know that you guys have that heart to as you shared with me before like that restoration that's been done in your guys marriage yes. mm -hmm. you know um through your relationship with christ and through coming together like you were saying i love that triangle as you yeah. both grow closer to christ you both begin to share the same vision the same mm -hmm. heart of god mm -hmm. yes. um but with that, you know, and, and I'm so excited, but, you know, there again, there might be some lost or hurting people watching this podcast, or there might just be some other, you know, husbands and wives that can gain some, you know, spiritual wisdom from the word of God through you guys um, to build them up in their marriages. So, you know, one final thing I'll, I'll we'll, we'll do ladies first. Tanya, what would, what is some, something uh, you'd want to share to the wives um, that may be lost or hurting or that may be struggling with sharing that vision with their husband um, right now. What's something that you would do to or would say to encourage them? So don't lose your faith and trust in God, number one. Mm. He's got your heart. Mm. And God showed me through all of us when I went through what I went through and still now. You know, not that I'm going through bad things now, but every day God's love is there for you and he hears your prayer. Amen. All you need to do is cry out to him, pray to him, open your heart to God. That's what he wants. Amen. Run to your daddy Amen. and pray for your husband. Even if it's tough and I don't want to and I feel like I'm hating him right now, I had to... Be um, obedient and have a pattern of pray praying for my husband when I don't feel like it. Yeah, I had to pray for him, and you know what? God touched his heart, yeah. and through that, it touches my heart, and that's a how the restoration keeps on going. So run to your daddy; he's listening for you, a father in heaven, and he's got good plans for you. I love that. You know, I I, I see that too. Um, Whenever I pray for people that I am, whenever I pray for people that I'm having a hard time, you know, with praying for them often softens my heart to be able to love them and want restoration for their life, you know. Yes. So I think, you know, both the husband and wife doing that, it's so important. Um, but Sig, what is something that you would share to the husbands out there that that you really would encourage or exhort husbands to do better? Absolutely. The uh, the first thing that uh, service you were talking about when we were kind of like getting broken. <laughs> uh, Pastor Craig was teaching teaching in Ephesians five. Mm. Big surprise there. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, yeah, I would really encourage. Firstly, read Ephesians five twenty two through thirty three. Mm. Um, really prayerfully read it see what we're called to do and you see we we are called as men to lead firstly don't abdicate that don't throw that away but we're called to lead with love mm -hmm. and then what does love look like um 1 corinthians 13 there's a whole chapter dedicated to it study that well mm. um see what that looks like and then see how you can apply that in terms of leading at home in terms of leading your wife that's the first thing. The second thing, be very intentional about it. Mm. Um, once again, anything anything worthwhile, worth pursuing, you are going to spend time with, you are mm. going to invest in. You know, I think of the verse where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Mm. If you treasure your wife and you treasure your marriage, you will invest in it. You will invest time in it. You will invest resources in it. You will try to seek out what's in your wife's heart. You will try. You won't be... Sorry, I know this is referring to the lukewarm church, but you won't have that lukewarmness towards towards your yeah. wife. You know, you mm. will you will pursue her as you did at the start. Yeah, <laughs> you know, mm. um, yeah. So, be intentional. Be in the word. Lead with love. Amen. I must and really in. pursue your wife. Yeah, if I can chip in quickly, like 
uh, Galatians 6, mm. the fruit of a spirit. Like, yeah. if I'm reacting this way, what fruit am I not representing right now? Yeah. Is there self control? Is there kindness? Is there gentleness? Is there love above all? So, just Galatians 6, just keep on ex- inspect your fruit in mm. your heart. I mean, the so- Psalms 1. 23, 4 to 5, that says, Seek my heart, God, show any wicked ways in me. Amen. And yes. he will do it. Psalms 139, amen. I, we love that verse here. Um, but, yeah, I, I wanted to end with, um, well, I'm going to ask you one more question, and then we'll end in prayer. But um, my last question is being a part of Calvary or Valley. And I, I love that you guys, you touched on it a little bit, Sig, about that having fun together. You know, and I think that's part of number one. You do want to make fun for you and your wife, like literally pursue her in that way. Not too much, yeah. though. Sometimes, you know, you serve together, but I think you have fun serving together. But then there mm-hmm. are times that you, you literally make time to have fun. But what is something fun, you know, what is a fun memory uh, that you guys have, you know, being at Calvary for over six years? What's something fun that you'd want to share? Just uh, maybe something that we all did together, or something with the church. Yeah, I think I think uh, for me probably one of the funnest things was um, okay, like the first the first time when we had Harvest Festival here, that was awesome. But the second time we had Harvest Festival, we were we we kind of I guess I was off uh, for a little while there, and we kind of got a bit more involved in setting up with that and that sort of thing. And it, it was just such a fun time with like like all the youngsters hanging out mm. and the the youth coming alongside and like just just getting set up for it and then just seeing the kids have so much fun on October 31st and doing it in a way that was honoring to God. Yes. That was, that's, that's the greatest fun memory I've had, like fun thing we've done here, oh. I think. <laughs> well, the Harvest Festival, you know, it's such a fun time, right? Yes. We, yeah. That's like our, our big event, you know, it's such a fun yeah. thing, you know, yeah. so. I remember I had to get those crates for you. Yeah. Yeah. Tanya, <laughs> she she's amazing at doing setup. She's so creative. She helps make the games and all that. So Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. For me it was the um I like the VBS. Oh uh, yeah. Vacation Bible school, which is coming up soon. Mm. But I love that seeing the kids coming here and laughing and dancing. Ah. And you are so tired when you get back home. But the next morning you yearn, and everybody have some coffee and donuts and we laugh together, pray, and then we go crazy and have fun with the kids and it's just that joy of the Lord. Oh. Mm. You know, it's funny, I, my favorite thing about VBS was the food. <laughs> we have the goofiest food it's like you know frosting and marshmallow with pretzel sticks and i'm weird <laughs> but yeah. thank you guys so much for just sharing your testimony i was so blessed that you guys made time out of your day um just gonna end in prayer and thank you guys for coming today so thank you well guys just thank you so much uh for sig and tanya and just being a part of our family lord we just thank you for them just being willing to share uh, their hurts, God, and the struggles, but also how you restored their life, Lord. And we Amen. just give you all the praise for that yes, through your word, through your love, through your Holy Spirit, God. And I just pray, Lord, if there's any other couples watching, Lord, yes, Lord God. they'd be encouraged, God, that you can restore Amen. even mm-hmm. the most destroyed or hurting relationships. You can renew uh, a husband and wife's love for each other, God. Amen. Mm-hmm. And you can give them hope, God. And I just pray for that, Lord. That if uh, there's anybody watching here, Lord, I just pray that they would just feel that conviction, Lord, Mm. in their heart, Lord, that you can restore their marriage, God. And I just, again, I lift lift up uh, any couples, Lord, that they would just see that you are God who restores, God. And just pray, Lord, they would be part of a Bible-believing church Mm -hmm. uh, Mm. that can hold them accountable, that can encourage them and spur them on towards love and good deeds and spur them on towards what the beauty of marriage entails, God. And I pray that... They can, they can, uh, if there is a damaged marriage, Lord, that you can restore it so that yes. they can see the true beauty of what marriage is, mm-hmm. Lord. And that's mm-hmm. for two people to grow closer to you, Lord. So just pray for this in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and to share this video. If you would like to listen wherever you go, get your podcast. Just type in Calvary Conversations. 
You can also follow us on Instagram uh, for our behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Also, this is a listener supported uh, podcast. So if you'd like to donate to the podcast, you can do that by going to the description below and clicking donate. Thank you guys so much for watching and God bless.